what's going on players in this video we are going to talk about the one three one defense or what we call the eagle defense or the pass deny defense and in this first video we're going to talk a, give a little bit of an overview of everything we're looking to accomplish when we're in a one three one defense we'll talk about the pros and a little bit of the cons but we'll just give you a quick overview of everything that we want to accomplish in the defense, our rules, what's required, our responsibilities, uh, and our rotations. We'll talk a little about that. And then in the next few videos, we'll go individually by position and we'll talk about the five R's, rules, requirements, the roles of each individual person our rotations and our responsibilities. So let's get right into it. So our one, three, one defense is primarily a defense that is designed to take away passes uh, and put a limited amount of pressure on ball defense and more pressure in the passing lanes than, any, than anything. And there are three rules that guide us in uh, our one three one defense. Again, the one is the top guy. We call you know our top, or in this case, the point guard. Then we have an alignment of three guys across, covering each lane. We have our middle, our center, our power forward, or, or our wing, and then our wing on the other side also known as our strong side wing if the ball is on the right the ball side wing or the strong side wing and the wing that's furthest away is our weak side wing and then we have our bottom guy uh, also known as our eagle some people call him the rover or the chaser we call him the eagle um, you can also refer to him as the bottom so there is our positioning of our one three one and uh we have three rules that guide us um when we're trying to um make sure that we are effective with this defense and the the first rule of this defense is we do not want the ball in this middle lane so the edge of the key or the lane line to this edge of the key or the lane line we call this the middle lane or the a lane we don't want the ball in this lane so when the ball is in this lane we are forced to play on ball defense straight up and we want to make sure that we pressure the ball so that he doesn't feel comfortable uh, dribbling down the middle of the lane and chooses a side either it's the bottom side or the top side or the right side or the left side however you want it describe it once he leaves the lane and chooses a side then we can melt down into our pass coverage and we have four players that will play pass coverage <clears throat> we'll talk about that in a second but the first rule is no middle there is no middle and we have a couple players that are definitely responsible for no middle and we'll get back into that when we specifically talk about each position the second rule that um, we want to define and that we want to to uh, have guide us is no baseline so if the ball ends up going and being passed to the corner we want to make sure that we don't give up our ba a baseline drive uh, against this against an offense um, just like the middle when we have the ball in the middle it leads to put all of our position, our players positionally in the middle lane, if you will. And it leaves a lot of open spaces in the perimeter and the corner for shots, um, wide open shots. So having the ball here forces our defense to have to close out because of the rules and responsibilities of each position and the alignments that each position will feel they'll have to be in when the ball is in the middle. And of course, if the ball gets passed to a, a passing option, we are closing out to those, but it still leaves a wide open shot. The other problem is if the ball can beat the defender with a no middle, then it really starts to put a lot more pressure on uh, our defense <clears throat> and leaves us in situations where 
with a good pass it might be a two-on-one situation or even with an overload where they have multiple uh, offensive players in one area it could even be a three-on-one situation so no top or no middle is rule number one no baseline is rule number two and again the reason for no baseline is with if the ball is able to drive baseline again it puts a lot of players in a position where we have to now defend multiple guys on the ball leaving two or three other players wide open and in very very um detrimental spots to uh where uh players can score again the rule for our top maybe he's not supposed to drop below the free throw line and our our ball side wing might be chasing and our our, our eagle might be in a position where he got beat baseline so now he's staying here and our center had to drop but he wasn't in position so a baseline drive effectively is a, a way to to um, influence bad rotation with this defense and put a lot of players uh, in bad position or critical position where they have to multiple players are looking to defend defend the ball and they lose track of where the offense may be so no baseline is the second rule or guideline of this offense and then lastly uh, the last rule that we uh, talk about throw these guys back into some position here is no quick passes you want to in this offense do your very best to deny the ball uh, from being passed from spot to spot really fast um, because there's a lot of pass lane rotations when a ball is in a certain spot we're supposed to rotate into help or into gaps um, when you can get a pass pass it puts a situation where it's hard for players to really close out this player who would be in low post fronting coverage so essentially having will throw a defender here doesn't matter who but he'd be fronting this defender right here if this defender or if they uh, the the offensive excuse me if why well, am i say defender if this offensive player was um schemed to or taught to pin a player a fast pass may look like a skip here to a skip corner and if this player did his job there would be no rotation to get to this ball right here um, really it would be uh, the Eagles job to get to this job to the to get to this ball and quite a long distance for that Eagle to travel to try to get to this ball to close out that shot Okay, and then in an effectively, if another pass had come down here or straight to the to the elbow, you know, to the middle. So uh, fast passes uh, are are a danger to this offense, and so we teach um, our players to force the ball to be lobbed or to be bounced, uh, and to be very active inside those passing lanes doing their best to slow down the passes and make sure that they're not swung 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 against uh the one three one all right guys that is an overview of the one three one now we'll get into each position and we'll talk about the rules the requirements uh their role for each individual player uh and then what their rotations are versus where the ball would be and their responsibilities <laughs>